Oh oh. Uh, these three triple square bolts are longer.
I just spent hours trying to remove the oil filter housing. I did not know I had to remove uh, a set of cables at the back of the driver's side uh, upper timing chain cover to be able to get access to the last bolt on top of the oil, fil oil filter housing. So I had to remove this double nut that is holding uh, two sets of ground wires. Uh, I snapped one of the ground wi wires. Fortunately, this one is removable. The other part is connected to the oil pressure switch that is uh, currently on the oil filter housing. So I will be able to repair it. So be careful uh, when you are working on uh, this. So uh, first of all, you have to remove this small knot. Then you have to remove these two. There are two of two uh, ground wires, uh, this one and another one that's uh, back there. And then you have to remove uh, this. Uh, double knot, a uh, double sided knot, uh, it's 10 millimeters. And then after that, you will be able to pull out the, the brackets at the back of the driver's side, um, timing, upper tim timing chain cover. Uh, and you will then be able to access, let me show you this 10 millimeter bolt that is on top somewhere here uh, on top of um, the the oil filter housing so at the bottom you have three uh, triple square bolts these are eight millimeters uh, space is limited so you will be using uh different combination of tools to be able to successfully remove these bolts i'm just making sure yeah it's an m8 so in eight millimeter triple square for the three bolts three bolts at the bottom okay now i am going to pull out the oil, oil filter housing. Oh. I already wiggled it. It just came out easy. I'm going to take it out. So currently the pressure, oil pressure switch is in the way. It's making the removal of this thing uh, more complicated. Okay, it's out. This is it, the oil filter housing and the oops, oil dropping. As you can see here, I need a torch so that you can see better what I'm showing. It's, it's dark right now, it's night time. So this, is the wire that snapped. So it's uh, uh, secured under the oil pressure switch. I'm going to remove it and repair the, the wire. Uh, I will let you know the size of the oil pressure switch uh, later. So uh, the oil filter housing is uh, at the back of the car is uh, secured let's say like this yeah secure like this and uh, at the bottom you have 
the three uh, triple square bolts, eight millimeters. One, two, three, and then on top you have this ten millimeter bolt. It's a small one here. So uh, accessing this ten millimeter bolt is what wasted all my day. Um, so this 10 millimeter bolt is uh, obstructed in my case. I don't know if uh, I'm the one who uh, reinstalled the bracket at the back of the car during my uh, upper timing chain tension replacement. I don't know if I did install the bracket the wrong way, but it seems the bracket are obstructing this 10 millimeter bolt. So you have to remove the bracket. It's a double bracket, uh, two on top that uh, have two plugs, two small plugs, uh, one gray and one uh, green, and uh, one black at the bottom. So these two set of brackets are held by the double bolt, double sided bolt that I just showed you, this one, uh, and has the ground wires secured onto it like I just explained. So uh, to be able to access this bolt, I have to remove all of that setup. And then uh, it was easy. I just removed this bolt and then the three other bolts at the bottom. So here is uh, our, oops, oil filter housing out of the car. Let me remove these uh, triple square bolts and put them back to the floor here. I just saw a mouse. <laughs> I don't want I don't want that inside. Uh, now uh, let me show you the gasket. Oops. Come on. So here's the gasket. Hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I'm trying to take it out. I think I'm gonna have to break it. Give me a minute. Oh, okay, it's out. Wow. So here is the gasket. It's hard and it's dead. It's uh, late right now. I'm gonna leave the car like this or continue tomorrow uh, with a better lighting to show you, uh, to better show you what's going on here. All right. Uh-oh. We have oil on the floor. Ooh. Okay, it's not a lot, but I thought uh, tilting the car would uh, prevent this but looks like you will still have uh, some oil leaked on the floor uh, when the, the F, uh, when the oil filter housing is removed so I think the proper way would be to drain 
the engine oil before uh, removing the oil filter housing so uh, if you don't want oil leaking onto your garage floor you better drain the oil before removing this let's have a closer look with better lighting here is a look at uh, the oil filter housing this is how it's positioned at the back of the engine these three are uh, eight millimeter triple square bolts this is a 10 millimeter uh, bolt hexagon uh, this is the oil pressure switch it's attached to it and uh, from the oil pressure switch there is a ground wire underneath the 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 switch here that connects to another ground wire at the back of the engine so uh these two ground wires are secured onto the back of the engine with this nut onto this double bot this double bot holds two brackets at the back of the engine one black and large and two small ones one gray and one green the black uh, connector uh, connects the fuel injectors on the driver's side and uh, also the uh, the low pressure fuel sensor I think so something like that or a, a fuel pressure sensor and the black uh, the gray and green the gray and green uh, connectors uh, are for the knock sensors uh, so you have to uh, first remove this bolt which secures the two ground wires first you remove this then you carefully remove the two ground wires of this double bolt and then you remove this double bolt which is securing the knock, knock sensors and uh, fuel injectors connectors and uh, once this bolt is removed you can move away the brackets at the back of the engine uh, these brackets are for the, the, the knock sensors and the fuel injector connectors so uh, these brackets are obstructing this bolt this 10 millimeter bolt uh, uh, that attaches the the oil filter housing to the back of the engine so this is the most difficult uh, board to get access to and it's just the, the easiest board to remove actually after you have cleared the space around it it's uh, the shortest uh, these three triple square bolts are longer look at it uh, they will take uh, a longer time to take out but uh, access to them is easier than uh, this bolt so after removing the 10 millimeter bolt and the 8 millimeter triple square bolts uh, I was able to gently wiggle the uh, the oil filter housing and take it out with the fuel pressure switch uh, the oil pressure pressure switch still connected to it 
I believe the the best way to do this is to remove the oil pressure switch but then I will have to replace this ground wire uh, it's uh, recommended to replace this ground wire when you have removed this sensor or this switch because this ground wire this part of the wire has a, a sort of seal so this is what is actually sealing the oil pressure switch so when you remove the oil pressure switch you have to replace this ground wire uh, mine is currently broken because I was having difficulty removing this first knot it was seized and the whole double bolt was spinning and in the end uh, one of the ground wires snatched uh, and fortunately it's this one uh, which is removable and replaceable uh, I don't have enough time to uh, order a new one by now and it will take some time to get here and the car is cut open so I will just uh, repair it and uh, install it like this all right so now I am going to show you the other side let me remove these three triple square bolts and uh, the 10 millimeter bolt that's how they look like let me flip this over and here is our can you see it yeah that's the the gasket that we want to replace it's hard and uh, um, I have noticed uh, a light leak it wasn't massive but it was only a matter of time before the leaks start being massive so it's a good thing that I am replacing this gasket now uh, so that's it that's how the gaskets look looks like uh, so the back at the back of the car you have three holes uh, on which this gasket is secured okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, protect these ports I don't want dirt to enter this and then I'm gonna clean uh, this uh, this housing and uh, we are going to further inspect it because there is a lot of dirt on it and we can't see the part numbers and uh, other things that's on it all right let's do this It's clean. Here is the part number 06E115 405A. Made in Germany. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Clean. Now I'm going to replace the, the gasket.
here is the new gasket the part number is 06E115 Four four six. Let's compare the old one and the new one. Let's have a look. So the old one looks thicker. I'm not sure if uh, it's thicker because of age and heat probably that's the case <laughs> all right before i install a new one i'm going to coat it with engine oil There is there's a an opening for the lip, so you have to place it correctly so that the the lip enters the opening. I broke the lip on the old one. Uh, all right, yeah. All right, the new gasket is installed. Now, I am going to go fix the ground wire that I broke. And uh, once it's fixed, I'm just going to insert it on the other side and it should be good to go. I will insert it, then I will press it. It just came out of it. So this part is not broken. The only part that's broken is this part. So I don't worry too much. The ground wire was successfully repaired. This is cool. I don't have to worry about this wire anymore. So the next step is I'm going to clean the the back of the engine, the part where the the housing is supposed to be sitting on and uh, I will reinstall the housing um, so let me show you real quick the two plugs at the back uh, the two brackets they are actually three connectors at the back of the engine that were obstructing the the 10 millimeter bolt so first we have these two see a green and a gray plug uh, they are the the the, the knock sensor connectors if we fold the wires we can locate the the knock sensors this one under the the cylinder five here under let me show you that's it the knock sensor right under the this the cylinder five plug can you see it right there so that's the first wire the second wire also goes to uh, the knock sensor on bunk one 
it's right there under cylinder 2 this this one is a little hidden i guess it's easier to see when you have the lower intake removed and uh, now there is a second bracket here this bracket has one large connector a black one it's uh, located under this double connector of for the knock sensors uh, this connector is for the three injectors on bunk two so as you can see the cable for this connector connects the injectors one two and three and uh, it also connects this uh, sensor so I've been uh, I already removed these two connectors in the in the past uh, when I was uh, replacing the upper timing chain tensioners but I didn't know what they were so uh, last night I uh, tried to make some research I did some research and I found out that uh, these uh, these two uh, green and gray are for the knock sensors and the black one connects the three injectors and the connectors on bunk two on uh, the driver's side now let's have a look at the back of the engine now that we have uh, moved these two connectors out of the way we can easily see oops it's a little tricky here Okay, uh, I don't know if you can see well. Those are the, that's the back of the engine. And those are the ports, the oil ports. So I'm going to clean the back of the engine and uh, we are going to reinstall the housing.
여기 있네요. Uh oh, this is too complicated. <clears throat> I have decided to change uh, the sides of the bolts. So normally, uh, let me see. normally, let me re remove this real quick. Uh, you have a long part and you have a short part. So, normally the long part is what's inserted uh, on the both brackets and uh, into the engine. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reverse it. So if I reverse it, I uh, since this part is long enough, I won't have to place the brackets first. I can just install the bolt in then I will hook the, bra the brackets on it. Then I will add the ground wires before placing the, the nut. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to place the nut so that I don't lose the bolt. The nut is just going to, going to help these wires stay in. Go in and install the bolt. I need a door. 
torch. Yeah, that's better. I don't think they designed this thing with. Uh, I mean, what well, the way they designed this thing, it's it's like the thing every job that needs to be performed on this area requires the engine to be out. So I think that's what they had in mind to make this thing like this. But for us who do not want to remove the engine every time. We would like to be able to do this easily. So I'm currently installing the double bolt. Then I'm going to gently remove the nut. I'm currently removing the nut, making sure the double bolt doesn't get out. It's a little tricky. They're both spinning. Okay. Careful not to drop the bolts in there. You don't want that to happen. Oops. <sighs> All right. Now I can remove the wire or the rope from the double bolt. Okay. Now I can properly install the double bolt wait a minute the problem is there's a washer and this washer won't allow me to oh no this won't work this washer will not allow me to properly torque that bolt because i can't install a socket but I think I'm just going to leave it like that. It doesn't need to be very tight. And once the, the knot comes, it's going to help squeeze it further. Okay, now the, the double box is installed. I'm going to start with the gray and gray and green plug just insert it see easy peasy now let's insult ins insert the, the black plug oh my gosh this is so easy <laughs> okay now uh, it's time for the, the ground wires so one ground wire comes from the oil filter housing. The one I just repaired. Let me locate it. It's right. It's connected to the the oil pressure switch. Just I'm touching it right now. I want to be gentle, not to break it. <sighs> okay, it's visible. I'm going to make sure these things are held in well. Now I'm going to gently place Uh, 
Cool, I don't know. I need to start over. I can't see well. All right. Block are installed. Now that black plug is installed. Now I want the ground wire from the oil filter. Okay, it's on it. Next, I want the other ground wire coming from the other set of cables on the driver's side. on it now I need to find a way to place the nut and that will be it I'm going to use the tip of this uh, magnetic pen I need to take out my hand. Here's a knot. I'm going to add some uh, emphasis because I had a hard time removing this knot and the whole double bolt was spinning. So here, emphasis. And I don't want to drop this thing either. So I should add a wire, I should uh, attach a rope to it. The camera battery died, but I completed the job. I just finished tightening uh, this nut uh, on the, the two ground wires and that was it so uh, i'm done installing the oil filter housing all the bolts were talked to uh 13 newton meters and as you can see the the bolt that uh, took us most of the time is that that one the 10 millimeter one that is hidden behind the brackets at the back of the car so uh, this is how it looks like and uh, you cannot remove the that bolt without removing the the brackets first the metallic bracket brackets for the knock sensor and the uh, fuel injectors first so uh, there so job done
is so tight gosh okay it's almost in Almost there. Okay. That should be enough. 